Greetings fellow earthlings and welcome back to my humble neck of the YouTube woods. Today we're going to try something different, again a forced for the channel. It's going to be a community challenge, a golden year community challenge, uh, in fact, set up by the legendary Generation Pixel a year or so ago. Yeah, so I'm quite late to this, but it looked like fun and was community orientated. So I said, why not give it a, give it a go, you know? And the requirements of this challenge are you have to pick one movie, one music album and one video game from your golden year um, and they all have to be in that year obviously so yeah that's the challenge and we'll give it a fair go shall we so we've pretty much watched all of the video responses on the playlist in generation pixels channel regarding um this challenge and all of them were interesting in their own way to be fair I could be wrong, but I don't think anybody has picked uh, this particular year yet, anyway. Um, and I'm going to start with my weakest part of it, which is the movies. Um, I'm not a massive movie buff, gasp, truth be told. Um, although I've watched an awful lot of movies over the years, um, I tend to watch them once, take away the narrative, or remember the story. And not really watch them again, even if I've enjoyed uh, the particular film. Um, I kind of blame video games on that, to be honest, because the more interactive aspect of video game storytelling uh, sucked me in that little bit more. Um, and I always opted for video games over uh, movies. Um, and I never really, I have an awful lot of a few friends that, you know, uh, know all the actors and know all these interesting trivia points on various movies and whatnot um, Whereas I never really delved uh, that deep, you know So I had to look up what movies were released in this particular year and I'll name a few I have a wee list um, So there was seven Which was about the serial killer and each of his victims Basically represented one of the seven deadly sins and then there was Judge Dredd, you know um, I am the law um, Mortal Kombat, which you know regardless of where you stand on it. We all remember that theme. Let's be honest uh, You had Toy Story um, And I remember Toy Story in particular because Me and a few of my friends when we were were that young We went to a local but ill-fated cinema and there's three movies that i really remember seeing in that particular cinema toy story was one of them you've got a friend in me the other one was uh power rangers the one with ivan ooze the first power rangers movie i believe and then jurassic park so i have vivid memories of watching those three films in this particular um cinema another movie was braveheart in this particular year which is a classic William Wallace of course and they had the crazy Irishman in the mix as well of course and um, you had Babe in this particular year Babe the pig which gets uh, vegan brownie points from me because obviously it contrasted how we treat vulnerable beings domesticated animals you had the crossover between how we would treat a piglet or a puppy, uh, for example. But that's not the... None of those are the films I've actually fallen on. The film I've fallen on is still in a similar mould to that. Um, but even more goofy. I've gone with Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls. Now, hear me out. In this particular year, I was 10. So... The year I'm talking about is 1995 and the concept of a pet detective, a detective who was looking out for the well-being of your companion animals uh, alone had me hooked. And of course the goofy, silly uh, humour uh, would have been very much up my alley at that age as well. 
and I remember the first film fondly and I've never gone back that's, that's the thing I've never really rewatched them um as I mentioned but I remember the core narrative I remember them basically making fun of Cliffhanger at the start where Ace is trying to rescue a raccoon who sadly and unfortunately in slow motion falls to his doom um which was very akin to the, the same scene in the movie Cliffhanger. And traumatised from this, he ends up going to a mountain retreat, I believe, uh, to tap into his inner calm and so on and so forth. Um, but he's persuaded out of retirement to find a albino bat. Uh, I believe the bat's name was Shikaka. Um, as I remember a scene where he mentioned it to the chieftain and the chieftain kept dropping down on one knee when he said, Shikaka. Yeah, I also remember them having an emphasis on the bat excrement. Wano. So yeah, um, and there's just certain clips from that film that's, that jumps into my mind, you know, when he's he's fighting the, the wee tribal warrior and he gets a spear stuck in his leg and his friend tries to throw another spear to him and that gets stuck in his other leg. Um, the rhino when he's trapped inside the artificial uh, mechanical rhino while being a bit spy like and the fan doesn't work and he ends up sweating and comes out of the only orifice available and you have this family who's on a bit of a safari tour and they see what they believe is the rhino giving birth uh, instead we get a over dramatic uh, goofy uh, Ace Ventura come out and flop nakedly onto the ground, you know. So yeah, uh, Ace Ventura When Nature Calls is my movie pick uh, for the year 1995. So, on to the next one, which is going to be the video game of this year. Oh, Wart's getting rowdy, throwing the... Um, the joypad away, eh? There you go, buddy. You look after that, pal. So, in the early 90s, I was no stranger to video game arcades. And I have lots of memories of being in the local pool hall slash um, video game arcade. And the two heavy hitter games, certainly in the fighting genre, were um, Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. And I ugh, played them an awful lot, as you might imagine, uh, in the arcades. And they were my first kind of introduction to uh, fighting games. Uh, so I had an awful lot of uh, fondness for them for that reason alone, you know. Uh, first time you could put coins in and fight your friend and so on and see who was better at uh, moving up the... Um, the towers in Mortal Kombat or, you know, traveling around the pixelated um, globe of the Street Fighter universe. But in 1995, um, or in and around that year, I ended up getting my first console, buying my first console. And that was a PlayStation 1. And I went there with my older brother and I vivid memories. It was in Smith's, uh, Smith's Toy Store memory serves where we actually got the the playstation and i remember a feeling like an epic journey you know the, the bus into the city center and coming back with the with the treasure and the anticipation of of actually getting back and and playing these games um i remember the pixelated t-rex the demo that we got and that was just that was blowing my my wee mind back then um, but two of the earliest games I remember for the PlayStation 1, and one I picked it up, pretty sure on purchase, was actually Tekken 1. So that kind of started things a little bit, but the game in 95 that I'm picking is Tekken 2. Because that really cemented uh, Tekken being my favourite uh, fighting game. And to this day, it still is my favourite fighting game. So it knocked um, Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. Which I still play on occasion and I'm still quite fond of. Um, but yeah, ever ever since, certainly Te Tekken 2 just cemented it for me where I was like, yeah, I really like uh, Tekken as a fighting game. 
and it's, you know, if I do go to fighting games, if I'm playing with friends or with my nephews at the odd time that we have a bit of a gathering, uh, Tekken is always the uh, the go-to choice, really. Apologies, we had some technical difficulties. Uh, apparently my phone's memory is full and a few apps had to be deleted and it looks like it's going to be quite uh, tight time frame wise. But I was just wondering um, what your favourite fighting game series might be or failing that, what was your favourite Tekken fighters? I was always uh, a Paul man, a Yoshimitsu man and I suppose that like, law to a certain extent um, but Nina Williams uh, who I only found out about seven years ago was actually, despite always her and her sister Anna uh, appearing to be very American to me, uh, apparently they are Irish. So, there you go. Right, I better clear some memory on the phone and then try and finish this off with the album. Okay, let's try and finish this off, shall we? Relatively swiftly as well, because I could talk about this uh, forever and a day, to be honest with you. So we're moving on to the album of 1995 now. And although I was, I love all sorts of music, uh, my mum is a big, um, or was rather a big Rolling Stones fan, my father a big Beatles fan, and they listened to all of the oldies and so on and so forth. But this one really piqued my uh, interest in music, kind of started the ball rolling. And it's a band from Anaheim. And you have Tony Canal on bass, you have Adrian Young on drums, you have Tom DeMont on guitar, and then you have Gwen Stefani as lead vocals. So the album I'm referring to, which I still have, of course, um, is No Doubt's Tragic Kingdom. And I have every No Doubt album, um, and they are the, the ones that I have from back then. They're very, it's very similar, it's almost a musical equivalent of my Resident Evil collection in that way, where I've, I've really held on to them. And obviously I'm still quite fond and ramble on about it because my current Magyar partner actually picked me up the um, the 25th year anniversary as a birthday present a couple of years back. Um, so the vinyl version of Tragic Kingdom, you know? Um, yeah, where to start? I mean, there's 14 songs on this particular album five of them were singles and it'd be interesting to see which singles you remember you know some were heavy hitters and big successes and some uh, kind of disappeared and it's only really uh, no doubters that would uh, still recall them you know um, we're looking at the side a here we have spider webs you know that was that was, was released as a single and was uh, fairly uh, successful you know to me a song about most of these are multifaceted quite multi-layered and you know deliberately open to opinion Um, you know they started off as a ska band but then as the years roll by they, they dabbled in nearly everything you know um so yeah it's about kind of social anxiety and um and people putting you under pressure and you know feeling anxiety about picking up phones and technology in particular you know maybe a partner that you're not getting along with and can almost be a, a bullying uh, type scenario, you know. I'm walking into spider webs, leave a message and I'll call you back. Um, let me see, Excuse Me Mister was another single released. I wonder if you remember that. Uh, that's a brilliant uh, song as well because it's, you know, you can say it's about you getting you trying to get into the limelight, getting some acknowledgement, um, trying to catch somebody's attention. But also the opening verse is, you know, um, I'm like a beggar with no luck. I'm holding signs up on your street corner stops. Like most, you try not to see me. Stare straight ahead, ignore the responsibility. So it actually touches on uh, poverty and people falling on hard times and, you know, drug traps and so on and so forth. And, you know, growing up in Dublin, uh, I'm no stranger to seeing people on the streets, unfortunately. Um... So it kind of calls that out a little bit, you know. And um, then we have Just a Girl, of course. That's a, a big anthem, a big feminist anthem of the day. Uh, let's say egalitarian 
anthem. You know, we can all go for a bit of uh, equality. Um, let me see. Sunday Morning, of course, was another single from their album. You came in with the breeze on Sunday morning. You sure have changed since yesterday without any warning. Um, and then, of course, Don't Speak, which was the biggest hit. Yeah, kind of a, a big breakup song, um, a big ballad, which is all now really simple lyrics. But sometimes the simplest lyrics are the bravest, if you know what I mean. They're just kind of open and raw and honest and genuine. And sometimes putting yourself out there, showing some vulnerability uh, can be the definition of bravery, you know. Um, you're apprehensive, you're fearful. Uh, but yet you say what you want to say anyway, you know? So yeah, what else have we got? Uh, Happy Now. Absolutely love that track. Um, different people. It's about different cultures. Uh, different personalities all across the uh, the world, you know? Uh, for me at this age, you know, just kind of opened a few um, cognitive avenues, if you will, you know? Um, hey You. Is another song I really enjoy. The Climb, another song I really enjoy. You Can Do It, little boppy motivational track. Uh, ended on this, um, a breakup song, but you know, it's one of those where you've really made peace and come to terms with it and are happy to um, to move on. You really realise that this isn't a great uh, relationship, you know. And then, of course, Tragic Kingdom, which didn't wasn't a single, but is on the album, you know. Then you have 16, which is kind of a coming of age song or, you know, you're kind of trapped between uh, being a young buck and becoming a, a young adult, basically. You've been a juvenile with a dolphin smile. Um, then you have World Go Round. And that's one of my favourite tracks now, World Go Round, because obviously it's a it's a play on words with the, the money myth, you know. I'm sure you're familiar with the with the phrase money makes the world go round and the chorus is basically we have to find another way to make the world go round which i quite liked and uh, it's essentially a environmentalist um song uh, the opening verses uh, in the quickness of our haste it seems we forget how to live the old blueprint no longer manifests such is the correct way to exist so wipe the grime off your view screen and please take a closer look. Environmental bandits up to their shenanigans, crooks disguised as you and I. We gotta find another way to make the world go around, etc. Um and the fact that you push shenanigans as a as a lyric, you know, gets gets brownie points from me anyway. Um and ten year old me learned an awful lot from the dictionary. Uh, from listening to this album because it seemed to me that every third or fourth word uh, I didn't actually understand so I had to go and increase they forced me to increase my uh, lyric and linguistic skills in general really um, because he just threw so many uh, unusual uh, lyrics in there for me at the time you know so as you can see in all the darkness and whatnot and um, we had more technical difficulties so i'm just going to finish that with the album is no doubts tragic kingdom which i have a firm fondness for um as you can see i've even started a uh, star trek enterprise in the background there trying to sort out uh, the phone's rebellious ways and giving me guff but yeah, guys, so that is the Golden Year Community uh, Challenge from Generation Pixel. Uh, thanks, Generation Pixel, for a play to it. And I'll be leaving the original video that he made in the description and also a link to his channel in general uh, because through him and things like the YouTuber of the Month competition, and just the interactions on his uh, channel in general, you will be able to find some really nice uh, members of the retro gaming and gaming community in general. Um, the likes of Dad Racer, really, really nice guy. You should check his channel out. 
um, the incredible one. Um, oh, there's just there's so many on there. You know, I'll leave a few in in the description anyway if you want to scope them out. Um, oh, of of course, uh, Gull Payne, uh, my fellow Irish uh, gamer and venerable vegan, if you don't be minding. Uh, so what's not the love? Um, he also was kind enough to do the first ever VR to my Resident Evil video. Um, not virtual reality now. Uh, it stands for video response, which was confusing this this lad for a while. Uh, fair play, goal. That was really, really nice of you. And great pics yourself uh, on the video. Uh, it's nice to see Resident Evil Zero um, not only get some love, but actually hit the peak of your list. And uh, that was brilliant, you know. So fair play goal. Sound lad. So that's it guys. I love you and leave you. And hopefully we'll speak again soon, yeah? Yeah, look after yourselves and each other. Uh, Slán of all you. Um, be kind to all kinds. Slán lads. <laughs>